everybody. I hope that you can all hear me right now. Uh, I would like to welcome you to the uh, JIPA webinar on taxonomies of internet governance. My name is Kasia Jakimowicz. I am responsible for stakeholders engagement for JIPA initiative and I will be a moderator for today's uh, session. Um, so, a little, uh, very briefly about the agenda today. Uh, after a brief introduction uh, from me, uh, Vladimir Adonowicz from Diplo Foundation uh, will uh, discuss the complexity of internet governance taxonomies. Then Luis Melchuario from, from Fundacion City, who is responsible for technological development of the JIPO tool, uh, will discuss the state of progress of JIPO on taxonomies and uh, instance right now. Um, after that, as the JIPO initiative is aimed at uh, bringing together other initiatives and observatories and seek synergies with them. We usually, during each webinar, try to present um, other initiatives. And this time, uh, Teresa Horeisova uh, from the Diplo Foundation will present new initiative, Digital Watch of Gen Geneva Internet Platform. Uh, finally, Jamal Shaheen and Trisha Meyer will briefly discuss the role of JIPO advisory. A group. After that, there will be a time for Q&A session. Uh, right now, you are all in the um, switch, audio switch off mode, but uh, you can pose questions by, uh, if you see the, the question mark sign, this is the sign uh, you can use to post questions and we and all questions going to be addressed during Q&A session. You can also raise hands if you click on the hand sign. That means that you want to uh, uh, get uh, the voice and audio, and I'm going to manage that. So uh, very briefly as an introduction, uh, because maybe not everybody knows something about uh, JIPO initiative. The, one more time, the objective of the Global Internet Policy Observatory is to provide technical tools that will make information on internet uh, uh, policy and governance widely and easy, easily accessible for different communities via uh, applying advanced uh, technologies. Um, so in general, the JIPO tool will automatically monitor internet-related policy developments identify links between different forums and discussions, will help con contextualize information and help identify policy trends, as well as provide easy to use display of information by incorporating modern visualization techniques. What is important to remember is that JIPO adopts federated approach. So the goal is to overcome the fragmentation and complexity of information. And JIPO does not aim to centralize all the information by, uh, by replacing the existing spaces. Instead, it is meant to, com uh, to be complementary and federated to them. Um, so JIPO is designed as a service not only to final users, but even foremost uh, to other observatories um, and this is why this is so important also to agree on common taxonomy uh, to to make uh, the JICO tool as much interoperable as possible. So by the end of the December 2015 JIPO will produce a federation roadmap which will show the, uh, the concept of uh, cooperation between the, uh, all the other initiatives. So that was a very brief introduction and right now I will give uh, the voice to our first speaker which is, uh, uh, which is uh, Vladimir from the uh, Diplo Foundation. Thank you for uh, allowing me to speak and thank you for inviting us. I shared the briefly the video as we agreed so that we can show at least a bit of face before we move on, but I'll switch it uh, off soon. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be with all of you today and uh, thank you again for inviting us to discuss more on taxonomy. It's uh, excellent to see all those familiar faces, well, names in this in this uh, circumstances at least, and uh, this promises 
that Jaipo has a good um, perspective, uh, having such a team of people that, that it's interesting to follow up. Um, let me move straight on, so I'll switch off my camera <coughs> to allow for more focus on the uh, on the uh, presentation. Uh, I hope you can see the presentation. It should be it should be visible. Um, okay. Um, to maybe to start with uh, is <coughs> to just make a brief comment on the title. And when we use we even in this discussion in Jaipo, and it's not the first time we use the uh, the term taxonomy, which to some extent might be misleading uh, or. Um, <coughs> It presents something that is much more uh, rigorous classification, such as you know the things like birds and stuff, where you can really put each uh, being, living being, or bird or whatever in certain category. With internet governance issues, and that's something we learned. <clears throat> that's that's quite tough. It's quite problematic, and issues tend to be switching from one category to another and intertwining. Um, so I'll probably use both of the terms uh, interchangeably. Uh, the, the goal of the, the next couple of minutes, at least from my side, is to give you a bit of uh, overview what we went through uh, in Diplo, building up the uh, classification, which I'm sure most of you are quite familiar with. Uh, I'll show, show it later, the building and the construction and the baskets and stuff. Um, in order to uh, outline some of the challenges and, well, our experiences with the approach on how the taxonomy building or classification of Internet governance uh, maybe may be done. So, um, trying to let me see. Moving on to the next slide, um, we basically um, started. I think that's an interesting bit. It would be interesting also to to question uh, if anyone has an idea when the first taxonomy of these kind of things was done. But actually, when when we firstly did any kind of uh, classification of at that time information society. Uh, issues. That was in, uh, believe it or not, 1996-1997. Uh, it was not basically deployed. It was Johan Kurbele doing it back then for the Commonwealth meeting. So it's almost 20 years now uh, of different efforts. And that's when the first, uh, when this Information Society Cube and later on Internet Governance Cube and the um, baskets were for the first time introduced. The important bit afterwards was 2004 when during the WIGIC, the work group, Working Group on Internet Governance, uh, Jovan prepared the document, the classification of Internet Governance. And you can still Google it, and there are many people mentioning it, because there are many people who still find it as quite one of the most useful classifications of Internet Governance. The good news is that um, Jovan is working on the next, uh, on the kind of updated version 2015, and we hope to have it by the end of this month. So we'll definitely share it with you. and. Hopefully, that can be something also quite useful for the next steps of JIPO and all the other um, classification uh, efforts. What is important to, to mention uh, is that uh, <clears throat> there is a lot of improvements that need to be done. It's, it's a very dynamic process. It's actually not uh, something we can now agree on and, and, and have it settled. But there is a lot of things to be done. Uh, in the first step, when we did, we focused on terms, then we focused on clusters, baskets in this case, and then assigning issues to baskets. So that's that was the basic kind of step to do the initial classification. But what, what remains, and this is probably the, the key slide <clears throat> also for the efforts, this describes current Diplo's work when it comes to classification taxonomy of IG, and that might be very useful for JIPO as well. <clears throat> and it is basically a, a combination of uh, kind of a smart mix between qualitative and quantitative research. So there is a lot of feedback that's needed. One thing is identifying the terms and clusters and trying to put or correlate each. But then there is a lot of uh, kind of explicit and implicit uh, feedbacks from policy documents, reports, from books and articles, from IG websites and news on one hand. And then on the other hand, this is something that we've been doing as well and JIPO is focused on which is a kind of uh, language analysis and uh, data mining, which helps the, um, the quantitative measuring of or correlation of different terms in different baskets and the way they are used and so on. We, for instance, used uh, by an analyzing the IGF transcripts, uh, the Netmundial documents, the IG books articles, um, news on the web and so on, to try to fit both the 
analytic, qualitative, and, and quantitative part. So having this in mind, the <coughs> uh, this kind of a combination, the signal is that this really needs a lot of efforts from, from many sides, a uh, lot of expertise, a uh, lot of team cooperation in a way, and as well as a number of feedbacks from the policy space. In our case, for instance, as an example, some of the feedbacks included uh, the courses that we do and the training programs that we do, so the reflections from the students and, well, professionals that were attending the programs that we did. The other one uh, kind of reflection was also um, the feedback on the initial uh, clustering or classification that Jovan did in 2004 and the CSTD report, which was recently done, which was also, to a large extent, Jovan's contrib contribution, but there were a lot of a um, lot of feedbacks on how this works and adjustments based on that. To give an example of the complexity, and again back to why this is not really uh, always taxonomy, or not easy to, to call it a taxonomy, um, <clears throat> so basically have an, have an idea of, let's say an example, we took an example here of cybercrime. You can in a way try to class your classi uh, classify cybercrime within one of the baskets, if you want to put it that way development, economic, legal, human rights, security, infrastructure, social, cultural. But you will see that there are too many different aspects of cybercrime, each of them going into different different uh, different uh, baskets. So it's not so easy to say cybercrime is actually cyber within the cybersecurity basket or group, if you wish. Um, now, the good thing is that when I mentioned qualitative plus quantitative, one side is analyzing where cybercrime Fits. The other side is quantifying it using data, uh, data mining, for instance, that we did, and saying, okay, cyber cybercrime to the largest extent falls under cybersecurity if we analyze the IGF transcripts, the Netmundial Mundial documents, the European Union policy documents, and so on. But then, second best, it fits in legal and so on. So it's kind of the analog classification. That's why we call it a fuzzy, fuzzy cl uh, classification. So that's one big challenge we have to have in mind. Uh, going a bit more in with the cybercrime and then adding another layer to this complexity is actually, or a useful tool, is building up a terminological model which is certainly much needed for any kind of data mining that we want to do in IG, which is a set of uh, other terms which relate to a specific term. In this case, cybercrime and a set of other terms, acronyms, actors, um, topics that actually remind or are linked or correlated to cybercrime. Building up a terminological model is a long process. There are many um, bits and pieces already done. Diplo has a, its own terminological model based on which we do data mining, but there are others, I'm sure. So this is something we need to use. Uh, after all, what we managed to do after, so now, now almost 20 years of working on that, is trying to identify over the t over t uh, top 40 issues clustered in these seven lines, well, here depicted as a, as a journey through the Internet Governance and Subway map, sometimes quite, quite useful. But there is also the improved version of the illustration on building under construction. And this is important, once again, to stress that this is a live process. It's a basically a long-term uh, long interplay of wisdom of many to codify this taxonomy and to update it and work on it. Uh, specifically speaking, we added two more baskets, cybersecurity and human rights. We picked them up out of the existing five uh, initially uh, because we realized that the context is changing. We also added the elevator of net neutrality, which didn't exist back in 2004. Those are the things that are, that are changing and we need to be aware of that. And maybe to conclude and focus on the on the, um, let's say, how this, how the taxonomy classification can be embodied and how the JIPO can use it or how, how it could be embodied within the JIPO. <clears throat> In our case, the way we used uh, this classification uh, was organizing the whole Internet Governance book according to the classification, doing a lot of reports and posters and illustrations that you could see uh, following this classification, uh, translating a lot of those. Internet Governance book is translated, I think, in, uh, in 13 languages now, and that's a, <clears throat> a number of uh, illustrations that depict this classification are also illustrated. That's a big 
And I see that Jaipur is also very interested in translating the content into a number of languages. That's something that needs to be done. And then there is this kind of a real policy impact of the classification that we saw. One is the way we influence the CSTD uh, report. Uh, we also work with the Friends of the IGF. Uh, I'm sure most of you know Friends of the IGF is the kind of a initiative to help the IGF structure its content better. So we work with the Friends of the IGF on organizing and tagging the content on the uh, Friends of the IGF site. Uh, repository based on this taxonomy and kind of organizing the tags and structure and so on. This is something that we can definitely do with Jaipur as well. And then the digital watch, of course, uh, within the Geneva Internet Platform, which Teresa is going to reflect um, more on later. The final sentence, just to conclude, um, building up a taxonomy is a work in progress. progress. It needs a lot of time, needs a uh, combination of experts, knowledge, reflections, and so on. Um, we are improving our own work. We have limited resources for that, so anyhow, we are looking always for further financial and uh, other support to finalize and advance this kind of uh, uh, development of taxonomy, and finally, provide it as a kind of uh, open source uh, taxonomy and share it with the, with the rest of the world. The way this can fit in Jaipur is more than clear. This is basically... Um, uh, this is basically something that, that as, I, as far as I see, and I, I'm sure we're going to hear it more in today even, uh, is it can be a basic um, stepping stone also for Jaipur to build up further on improving this uh, classification and taxonomy. I will stop here. I don't know. Okay, I saw Louis' question, so I'll respond to this one, but later I'm, I'm leaving back to you Kasia, to tell me if there are other questions. So Louis said... Um, <clears throat> Vladimir, uh, uh, do you share your complete classification scheme in some machine-readable format? Uh, basically, the, the, um, the classification that is based, that is the document that started in 2004 and will be uh, published, updated by Johan Kurbalia, by, I hope by the end of this month, it's a, it's a document. So that's not a kind of a database, but it's rather a policy document like the previous one, which helps understanding how to organize information. Um, the results of the uh, a lot of data mining we do have. Uh, the terminological model, we do have bits and pieces of that, but that's still not easy to share. Uh, some of the back, background organizations, I'm sure they could be uh, provided in a machine-readable format so that that can support the JIPO. I'm sure we can check with the technical team, but I'm quite, quite positive that can be done. I stop here. Cassie, back to you. Let me know if there are any other questions. Uh, thank you, Vladimir. One, uh, there is a question by, from Stefan Verhoes, but this question we're going to address during Q&A session. But uh, Stefan Verhoes also uh, sent a comment that for great presentation and thanks for leadership in the field. <laughs> so, uh, Stefan, uh, uh, I see your question. We're going to address it during the Q&A session. And now I'm going to uh, give the voice to Mr. Luis. Hello to everybody. Thank you for being here today. And I will try to explain you what currently are our main questions or our approach dealing with, with this complex uh, topic of the Internet government's taxonomies. And, and talking about that, uh, we are trying to develop a technical platform and we are not trying to, to solve the complexity of, of, all, of all this matter of, the, of defining a global taxonomy, but we try to, to make our tool uh, the most open-minded uh, about it and, and try to, to interoperate with the rest of, of the initiatives. So I will switch off my camera and then we'll begin with the presentation. Okay, here it is. So Cassia made a great introduction of, of our project, so oh, I'm sorry, I skipped one. So I, I will not stop here uh, about what is JIPO and, and so on. But for us, we have to define this this conceptual framework to to, to make uh, an automatic classification because our project is mainly based in 
in, in machines and, and processors and servers and, and semantic technologies trying to deal with the amount of, of information uh, growing and about these these huge amounts of, of themes and topics that goes under the the main theme of internet governance and policies. So uh, our challenges are uh, these ones. Uh, try to be uh, inter more interoperable with the rest of initiatives and also uh, this experience with our technical platform uh, to serve as an input for, for this federation roadmap that is uh, in starting with a study with the best options to to make this interoperability, interoperability uh, a reality. Uh, also, we try to to use a, a classification scheme a system that uh, maximizes the, the usability of the of the tool, because uh, there's one part of the tool that is uh, will be open to to users, to end users, and, and will have to perform searches within the the tool. And we want them uh, not to try to figure uh, what are the correct terms to to search for for some some kind of issues, and we want to provide them a, a simple classification scheme that shows them step by step how to how to make searches. And also another another different uh, issue is trying to be multilingual, or at least that our taxonomy uh, could be expanded uh, even from from external. Uh, collaborators or initiatives or, or private. Uh, so uh, our main technical challenges, dealing with the previous ones, is this uh, perform the, this language processing in a in a um, correct manner and, and being very accurate and not to 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 um, misunderstood the information and, and try to deal with, with all those issues like synonyms and, and, and so on. Also we have to implement a, a good management of these, these kind of terms or we call it facets because we use a, a, a faceted classification and, and also provide this useful interface to, to search in, in, this, in this kind of, of tool. Also provide a good translation mechanism that can do this translation on the fly, trying to 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 provide a support for for the most the, the, the biggest amount of, of languages that that we can be adding to to the tool. We will start with with English and then with the Spanish, but uh, the tool will provide a, a system to to support the the expansion of, of to another languages. So explaining a bit, uh, going dirty with the technical terms, uh, I want to, to show you that uh, we have analyzed an analyzer module, that, that's how we call it inside the tool, that is the module responsible to add all these metadata, these semantic tags uh, to each uh, element of information, each item that the tool uh, gathers, collects from, from multiple sources of information. So we can uh, add people, for instance, like this, this kind of entities are people, companies, places, and themes or facts about the, the content of the information, the text that is inside the news item or the event or the document or, and so on. And then in this case, based in these themes, in these facts, our tool uh, tries to discover what are the general topics, those baskets, those topics uh, uh, in, that uh, the information is talking about. So that, that discovery is what we use to, to classify under this, what we call aspects, aspects or baskets, you can call it you know, in other initiatives. Then when we, when our tool performs this classification, uh, gives you this interface uh, to the end user that uh, can perform searches, filtering by these uh, aspects or tag or these tags, different tags or the different levels or, or taxonomics that the, that the tool has. What was our approach? Okay, our approach was using a, 
classification predefined classification, not an open classification gener automatically generated based on the on the content. No, we we we, we use uh, a predefined based on this uh, internet governance taxonomies. We made a, a comparison between different initiatives and trying to to compare what the, what were they using in, for their baskets and, and their common topics, and then we we made uh, a common trying to make a, a common taxonomy, and then uh, we use different uh, facets, what we call facets like places, content types, it, the the proper internet government issues, and we store different metadata that is the information about the content of the item in these different uh, facets. We try to use uh, vocabularies, existing vocabularies when when there are. Uh, some or any, uh, like Dublin Core for elements uh, that we can for types of information, like saying if it is a, a document or is it an event or a conference or what is. We can use this this type of vocabulary and we could use other if, if it is in at least um, more or less internationally accepted in the community. Okay, our proposal for the for the JIPO taxonomy or this taxonomy was was first this we not uh, we did not use every aspect of the of the of the different uh, possibilities or different taxonomies we only choose uh, very few ones like one was obviously the dates dates contain some of information uh, uh, pro are uh, sourced in a specific time because there was an event or there was a, the launch or publication of a policy or document so you have the date of publication you have the date of the event you have the date of an article or, a, or an analysis made by someone we have also the narrative what what is the structure the kind of narrative that this uh, information has it is a news a block item a report this is these are the easy ones <laughs> taxonomies we have also the the limits the boundary when we call about the territories the information uh, is is being produced and not only produced but talking about issues in uh, some regions or maybe some uh, countries or even at a more at a more local level in in some cities or even only in a, in a specific city that we can see an issue or a problem maybe with internet access or or whatever so we only use the, the what regions level being these ones and then we we went to the to the most complex one that is uh, okay we have uh, scanning the information making that uh, that analysis language analysis of the content we we go and, and try to search for evidence what we call evidence is these specific terms that tell us that this topic is uh, trying to 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 say something about uh, different issues, maybe uh, you can find uh, some uh, terminology specific to the technical uh, aspects, like maybe IPX or IP or uh, internet addresses or things like that. You look for this specific evidence in the text, and you also can see uh, maybe topics about laws, about different things, and we can collect those tags. Then uh, we can say that we have different issues, uh, like in the previous presentation, they have 40 different issues in these fields. What we will you see in this in this link between aspects and, and tax, these reversal links, is that we have that terminological model for different aspects of the internet governance using uh, those tags, those tagging, maybe explicit or, or synonyms or, or those correlated terminological that makes our tool uh, know what the content is about and then classify it under one or several aspects in the internet uh, governance field. We can use also uh, more more facets like these ones, actors, maybe one different uh, facet and then for instance what we call factors that may maybe very horizontal or transversal uh, kind of, of aspects like economical, social, political, ethical, legal and maybe moral and maybe more if we, if we go on. But at this time we, we do not use this because for us uh, they are 
very implicit and if, if needed we can add it uh, later but it requires more complete analysis about what is a social issue or an ethical issue it's more complex for us to detect that kind of sentiment uh, sometimes that uh, trying to detect if it is a security issue or an economy issue but uh, what we want try to, to do is to have control vocabularies and try the community to agree on these official words and phrases that will always be used in, our, in the tool, in JIPO tool for the concepts or things they represent. Uh, we try to collect and agree on this list of predefined values uh, for the metadata element that in this case is the tax, but uh, we would like to agree in this control vocabulary that, that is also the, the the procedure for its update, if, if the community is going to update it, is, this is the process that was described more or less by, by Vladimir uh, talking about with the community and uh, evolving this, this general taxonomy in adapting to the, to the future and adapting to the, to the moment. As an example, uh, we can say that, okay, but if there is no agreement reached on a common internet governance taxonomy. What happens? Because uh, every initiative has its, its one taxonomy, different terms, different classifications. What happens when when we are going to to agree on a common one? It's difficult to do. Okay, so keep calm and make relations. Don't worry, because uh, technology comes to the rescue, and we can use uh, using the semantic technologies to link to make relations between our taxonomy, for instance, this is more or less the, the same example that Vladimir used. Instead of cybersecurity, we use a uh, computer crime. Maybe this kind of taxonomy that we use in JIPO, uh, we can say that this term is the same as the term used by the, the fast classification used uh, in libraries and, and other experiences. Maybe it's the same term like uh, uses and a specific other observatory different from JIPO that is using cybercrime or maybe with the DBpedia that is using computing crime. We, are, we can say that from our side but any other initiative can, say the, can use the same technology to say okay our cybercrime is the same computer crime that JIPO uses. Then can be even a third agent in the middle that uh, could uh, have those could handle those transformations. Ideally, if we could agree on this common taxonomy, uh, some some organization can hold it and can share it in a, in a machine readable format, and the rest uh, could share it and be more interoperable. This would be the ideal uh, scenario for for us. But we we have to start doing things in our tool and, and trying to be to be interoperable, so we can use we can use this. So from now on, we, we want to, to ask you for collaboration, maybe in the debate, in the, in the general plane, or maybe in the technical plane, trying to do this, this kind of linking and, and relations. So thank you from my side, and I hope there will be some questions about it. Uh, yes, uh, Luis, we have some questions, but I, uh, as I said, uh, maybe it's better to, um, to address them during uh, Q&A session. One question from Richard here is, uh, what about obtaining and publishing data for areas where data is not available? And we have also um, a question on taxon two questions on taxonomies from Stefan Verhulst. But maybe I, I will read and you can think <laughs> about it while, uh, while there's a presentation of Digital Watch. Question one, how to go about ensure interoperability across different taxonomies? Should we focus on a few large buckets that everyone can agree on? Uh, I think it's a question also to Diplo Foundation. And question two, how to distinguish between issues, for example, cyber security and approaches, legal human rights? So these are the two questions from Stefan Verhoots. Uh, so I'm going to let you, Luis and <laughs> Vladimir and Teresa think about it, but right now um, I'm going to give the voice to Teresa. Uh, who is going to present a new initiative of the Geneva Internet Platform called Digital Watch.
Well, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, giving us the opportunity for the invitation. Uh, I will just continue uh, introducing one product that has kept us quite busy uh, in the in the recent months uh, at the Geneva Internet Platform, and I will try to concentrate as much as possible on the on the linkages with the uh, other initiatives, in particular uh, JIPO. I will switch off my camera now, as was uh, the instruction. And uh, I will, uh, I will basically, uh, okay, go, go to the first slide. Let me just see. I have some problem. Get moving on the second slide. Very good. So, what is uh, Geneva Internet Platform uh, Digital Watch? Uh, first of all, for those of you who are not familiar uh, with the Geneva Internet Platform, is uh, it is an initiative of the Swiss authorities operated uh, by Diplo Foundation. So, this is where the link. Uh, of Diplo and the Geneva Internet Platform uh, comes in. And uh, alongside, let's say, the physical pillar uh, of the platform in which we uh, organize various events in Geneva, provide capacity development support uh, to our key stakeholders who mainly are in the diplomatic circles, we are developing uh, an online pillar, or if you wish, observatory that should complement our work and that should uh, that should serve the community that that we are working uh, for mainly. Uh, the product of the digital watch uh, is possible uh, due to partnership of uh, the Geneva Internet Platform uh, with uh, the Internet Society. I am now giving you a bit of taster of uh, what it is about. Uh, it is not yet live, uh, but it will be uh, very soon, and I will provide details on that uh, about the timeline a bit later. What I would like to stress uh, very much uh, that uh, while our uh, content on uh, the GAP Digital Watch uh, will be curated, it is uh, it is our uh, absolute top priority to have it as a strictly neutral and independent uh, resource. How does it work in practice, uh, uh, especially in the fact that we are in partnership with uh, with others, is that it is Diplo Foundation which has uh, the quality control. Uh, it is built on the resources and taxonomy classification, all the resources that Vladimir has has been talking uh, talking on uh, before uh, before me, and we do take care that what is presented uh, gives the neutral view and is uh, you know of a, of a certain quality standards. What is also quite important that uh, the observatory as a resource for diplomats is not uh, happening kind of out of the blue. Uh, we try to have a very integrated approach uh, to, to how we serve the community because the key really is uh, interconnection. So we do combine a wide set of resources which include uh, the online observatory, the regular monthly briefings on internet governance that we uh, that we organize every last Tuesday of the month. It's a one hour short uh, targeted briefing um, uh, which is happening here in Geneva but also uh, is open to anybody participating online in which we are trying to uh, summarize of what has mattered in digital politics in the previous month, what is the outlook for the month ahead. It's also accompanied by the so-called Geneva Internet Platform Digital Watch newsletter, if you wish, uh, which uh, comes out uh, at the beginning of each month, again in a printed format summarizing what has happened, uh, with a slight focus on Geneva. And uh, the uh, monthly IG barometer, which is which is a fun activity uh, that we are trying to involve in. Uh, given the fact that we are based in the World Meteorological Organization building here in Geneva, we kind of are influenced by the by the weather weather team all the time. So we have included the barometer showing basically what has been hot in the previous month and explaining why what has gone up, what has gone down. Uh, in the next few slides, I will just give you a bit of taster of what uh, the GIP Digital Watch Online Observatory will look like. I would like to stress that this is a work in progress. Uh, it uh, we still have about two weeks uh, to go before we will be able uh, to share it uh, to share it live. Uh, but it will be built on our classification taxonomy that Vlada introduced uh, on the on the issues divided into uh, the seven baskets. It will have a very comprehensive overview of events, uh, actors, 
and instruments. For instance, for the instruments, we will have um, more than 400 plus uh, imported instruments uh, of various, uh, um, you know, level, uh, if you if you wish. And what is very important that they will all include the so-called deep links, meaning that if you, for instance, click on cybercrime and a relevant tree to your instrument uh, dealing with cybercrime, you would be able to get automatically uh, to that part uh, of the of the given instrument. This is uh, what the, the basket uh, typical um, page uh, would look like. As you see under this basket, you would have uh, you would have various issues. As uh, as we like to do, we try to uh, put quite a lot of uh, focus on on the visual likability uh, of the information presented. Uh, this is a sample uh, page presenting one of the issues. So through smart tagging, you would both have um, the latest updates. Uh, you would have some uh, fun data mining uh, uh, analysis of media media corpora. Uh, you would have uh, the relevant events, actors, and instruments. Uh, tagged and presented under under each issue. Uh, this is an example what a typical actor page uh, uh, would look like. Again, linked and tagged uh, with the other pillars uh, of the of the observatory. Now, uh, why do we uh, actually do all this? So, um, as I have um, as I have stressed, uh, we work a lot with diplomats, and we have often been asked by diplomats. And here I will I will use an example we, we may have mentioned in other uh, in other occasions already. We have a diplomat from a country coming to us and asking us, I need to follow cybersecurity. Where do I find as a one-stop shop all the treaties, other instruments, description of the topics, upcoming events, uh, and relevance for my job? So so this is what we are trying to do. We are trying to provide a simple easy access to digital policy information. What is really important in our view, and here is one of the main points why I do not consider the work we are doing as necessarily competing to the work uh, that, the, that the other initiatives are doing, is that we serve a specific context. We do believe a lot in localization of the, of the, of the content and really, you know, as is, as is so, as is used in my presentation, what the diplomat here in Geneva needs may be quite a different type of information than a civil society activist would need. However, of course, we would be very pleased if also other communities find uh, the work we are doing and the final product uh, as useful. So it is definitely complementary uh, to other platforms and we are really open uh, to continue in this discussion, which is already happening with JIPO. I have uh, I have already covered the issue of how uh, we do it. Uh, so maybe just to just to stress um, the advantage that we have had uh, as a starting point is that we basically had a very rich uh, repository of various resources, and we have experimented with various ways how to how to use uh, use this uh, this repository uh, and uh, provide it to the community uh, for uh, for quite some time. Uh, what is really important for the exercise is that this is not a sim simply crowdsourced initiative, uh, which you know is very useful as well. But we try to curate the content. So um, here uh, we are working quite extensively on having a network of curators that are responsible for following particular uh, particular issue. We do combine both some qualitative and quantitative elements uh, of the. Uh, of the of the platform, and we always try to present uh, the information uh, in in a suitable suitable context. So the engine under uh, under what is actually shown uh, in in the GIP uh, digital watch is summarized in this uh, in this schema. So uh, there are a lot of sources really because we use a lot of data mining activities. So really, you know, there there are a lot of news uh, and have, are various uh, internet resources that we use, there are analyses, there are academic resources. Here combined both in the quantitative and qualitative take on that, we get to the presentation layer and uh, try to provide a, provide a very comprehensive uh, resource. 
Now, uh, this is one of the drawings that uh, that you may have encountered before, as especially uh, Jovan Kurbali, our, our director, uh, likes like using it quite a lot because because it's kind of uh, universal. Now, for the for the JIPO and uh, Geneva Internet Platform um, uh, Digital Watch, is that here uh, the plans? Uh, I was very pleased when, for instance, Luis was talking about the multilingual. Um, Ambitions of JIPO because this is exactly the way that we that we feel is absolutely needed and useful. The data that is presented needs to be localized. Well, the internet is global, but basically the impact of the internet uh, is very local. So, if you take, for instance, privacy, uh, it would have a much higher relevance than Euro in Europe than in Asia from various reasons, and uh, that's why we are trying uh, to have this ambition in mind. To, uh, to, uh, to localize or to serve an adjusted uh, content to the, to the local, uh, local circumstances. On the aspect of uh, how to do this practically, one possible idea that we, we could uh, discuss further uh, with, with uh, the other initiatives is kind of share uh, the network of the, of the knowledge curators as, as, we, as we call them. Now, this is just a brief example of one of the data mining experiments that, that we are using. Uh, we do have a data cognitive scientist in-house uh, for, the, for the work on, on GAP uh, Digital Watch. And this, this map uh, that, that you can see here uh, basically shows uh, the, the IG Media Corpus being combined with our Internet Governance Taxonomy. Uh, in this case, uh, over 23,000 texts uh, on the internet uh, were analyzed, and the drawings on the maps uh, with the color uh, color adjustment uh, shows the presence of different countries in the debates related to the 40 issues that are part of our uh, observatory and the, and the classification. Sorry. And uh, last slide: What is going to happen in the next days and next weeks? We are. in the next two weeks a uh, usability test with uh, selected communities and we are uh, hopefully on track uh, to be able to go live uh, with uh, Geneva Internet Platform Digital Watch on 28th uh, September. If you click the link in the presentation or if you go to the Geneva Internet uh, Platform website, uh, you would be able to register for this event which is happening again here in Geneva but with full uh, online participation. Talking now very concretely, and I'm getting to, to the last points of the presentation about the linkages uh, with JIPO and other uh, initiatives. I was so pleased to see in the uh, in the one of the first welcome slides that Kashia was showing, uh, using the term of overcoming the fragmentation. Yes, this is definitely something that we do not want and, you know, however we can, we, we really want to continue these discussions both on the taxonomy but also some, uh, on some other practical ways on how to, uh, how to cooperate. Uh, the advantage of our taxonomy, and uh, this, is, this is maybe um, where I'm touching one of the questions asked previously, is that it is quite established. Uh, we are really happy to, uh, and would be of course very, very flattered if uh, some inspiration was taken from from this taxonomy. And Vladimir, in particular, uh, could uh, could probably t say a few more points on that. One of the other practical ways on how to cooperate, and uh, I've mentioned that briefly, is to uh, is to try to see how to how to share the curators. Uh, we are planning quite extensive, uh, busy training for the curators to meet the level of uh, of standards that that we are aspiring for. We are also part of the discussion, and I have already promised to Kashia to be part of the federation roadmap. Uh, so this is something where uh, where you can count uh, count on us. Another very practical uh, practical role that Diplo has in Is that we have one of our member of staffs, uh, staff, um, Ginger Park, as a member of the advisory board of JIPO. So this, we believe, is also one of able to be scaled up. Uh, the opportunities and ambitions uh, are there. 
uh, but uh, I'm, I'm really happy to, uh, to continue discussing this uh, with, uh, in the coming weeks and months. Sorry for taking probably more time uh, than, than was planned, and uh, I'm giving the floor back to, back to Kashia. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Uh, so right now we're going to change an order a little bit because there was uh, a lot of presentations and a couple of questions. So now we're going to start with Q&A uh, um, session. Uh, first of all, let's start from the very beginning with a Fred Clark that is giving the greetings from uh, Guatemala City for, uh, for everybody. As you can, as you probably know, today's audience, which is uh, very big, it's right now 42 people participating in webinar. Uh, today's audience is from all over the world, so thank you, uh, Fred, for the greetings. We have the first one from Richard here. I think it's for Louise, uh, but also for uh, to everybody. What about obtaining and publishing data for areas where data is not available? Um, Louise, question. Louise? Okay. My voice, yes. Do you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, data that is not available, information, do you mean? Okay, for us, it, I think it would be difficult because JIPO currently uh, gets its content from online sources, sources that uh, publish this information and data over the internet and that are not behind any type of uh, restriction. I mean, it's not uh, behind a uh, a password, a user, or, or or that kind of 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 barriers to to get the information. So if I or if, if, if this was the the question, that is the answer. But uh, I, don't I, know I that kind of I thing. I can try to unmute Richard here. Uh, I'm going to try to give a voice to Richard here. Maybe he can specify. Hello, Richard. Are you still available? Uh, Hello? Uh, yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay, yes. Uh, yes, that's a, a, a clear answer, and it is what I thought the situation was. I just wanted to reinforce the fact that for many areas, in fact, the data are not available, uh, and so this could be an issue. But of course, you have to start somewhere, and so I understand you're starting with the data that are publicly available, and then after that, we'll have to see what to do about making more data available. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, now I'm going to give the voice to Stefan uh, Ferhuls that had uh, two questions, uh, probably more to Vladimir and Teresa, uh, but also to Luis. Stefan, uh, the floor is yours. Hello? Hi, Stefan, can you hear us? Okay, I'm gonna. I'm uh, while waiting for Stefan. I'm gonna read the questions that Stefan had. So, Vladimir, first question: How to go about ensure interoperability across different taxonomies? Should we focus on a few large buckets everyone uh, everyone can agree on? Could uh, Vladimir, if you could address this question? Mm. Yes, thank you, Kasia. Um, I hope you can hear me. Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. Okay. Um, uh, that's that's an excellent question. That's a key. Um, I think uh, thinking loud is that um, well, basically we. What does it mean taking information one from another? Let's say the digital watch from JIPO or JIPO from digital watch, for example. That means picking up bits and pieces of information which are. I would say the, in the basic units that are the topics, so let's say the cybercrime or whatever we agree that the topics that the, the, the micro level organization is, not the tax, but the topics. Let's say you remember the subway map with 40 topics that we identified. We can agree probably on having these 40 or 50 or 35, whatever topics. So I think that is important. Now, the way we, that is what we pick up on from another. Um, the way we organize these topics within the bigger clusters or baskets as we call it, that's probably not as sensitive because then we can in cooperation agree on how to kind of translate from one organization of these bits of topics into another. Um, 
anyhow, it needs to be it needs to be a close cooperation between the two or three parties or whoever is is involved. Uh, and I think what Chaipa should probably do is agree on one um, set of topics, so to speak, and of course the organization. At the Digital Watch you will see that we are following the baskets approach. The baskets approach basically came up as a, and that's already the response to the second question, but I'll leave it back to you, is a response to a, to a, a diplomatic view how to tackle the, the, the issues. But I think the issues, the topics, that's, that's the key to agree on and, and Definitely, that's something that needs to be done together and with a lot of community back and forth. I don't know if I, I probably rather opened up further the question than uh, gave a response, but I think that will be a kind of a basic line of my thinking. And, uh, okay, the, the second question that should start to, to, to answer, uh, I'm going to read it so that everybody knows. Uh, how to distinguish between issues, uh, example, cybersecurity and approaches, legal versus human rights? And I have to admit that we have quite a lot of questions to follow right now. <laughs> okay, so I should be quick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> basically, again, uh, connecting with what I said, the way we, we did it was Firstly, so you can do a classification from the top down or bottom up. The way we did it, usually in these kind of things, you do a bottom up. You identify the micro level, you identify the issues, uh, and you agree on issues. And then you you try to identify the uh, the clusters, the baskets, as we called it. I said we called it baskets because back then when we started doing it, or when Jovan started doing it, uh, he was focused on diplomats, and the OSC at the time had the baskets. Human uh, it was a uh, social, uh, economic, and so on. So that's the way we we approached. You don't necessarily the right doesn't necessarily have to follow the same approach, but it, it might. Whatever the point is, in issues I think. And then uh, the important bit on that is um, how do you fine tune it? So it's not set in stone. Even if you decide to to go for 40 issues, if you go through the the uh, the timeline of our issues, we had firstly. 20 issues and then 30 issues and then 40 issues. We changed even the the, the clustering, the baskets. Uh, last year, as I said, we introduced cybersecurity. Before that, it was within the infrastructure. It was a topic within the infrastructure because it was a network security issue. But it emerged now with cyber warfare, terrorism, name it. I mean, critical infrastructure protection, many other political aspects. It's not anymore uh, an issue. It's, it became a basket with a lot of sub-issues. So we just have to be ready to adapt as the time goes and get feedbacks from the community and, and change it as, as the time goes. Um, thank you. Uh, next question that uh, we have, uh, uh, we had a question from Clark, but Fred Clark, but I already answered, how we can get access to documents that Vladimir presented. So all the presentations and documents will be available on jiponet.org site uh, within, uh, by the end of this week. Uh, another question, uh, uh, from again from Stefan, but maybe first Amanda Lawrence. Can you see the di diplo taxonomy somewhere? Um, what was the question? Can we see so it? I, yeah, can we see uh, diplo uh, taxonomy somewhere? So I, I guess it's uh, the question about uh, Geneva Internet Platform. Well, I I would uh, I would suggest, and Teresa can add uh, the basic way it was organized is well illustrated in this building under construction that I shared and will share with you. That's where you can see how it's structured and what are the relations. You'll see, for instance, the privacy goes through a couple of baskets. It doesn't stay at one, or data, sorry, data protection it was. Um, that's one, one way to see it, how, it, how it's organized. The other one is digital watch that, that will be open, and maybe Teresa can add on, on that. Uh, yes, if I can quickly, yes, that is correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, hello? I can speak? Yes, yes, I can speak. Mm -hmm. uh uh, thank you. Yes, just to, just to add very quickly. Uh, yes, uh, it is it is public and available uh, in various forms. Uh, however, uh, for the launch event of the JP Digital Watch on the 28th of September, we are also preparing an updated paper on the taxonomy. So, uh, so that is something that we will we will be sharing. That. Uh, thank you. Next question that we have from Stefan uh, Ferhorst: uh, Would the common table Google Doc, where all the different observatories, effort list, uh, the different taxonomies, be a first step? 
we uh, mentioning that we uh, that uh, we have such an early draft to develop uh, draft, and would it be a first step to develop a areas of commonality and basic ways to apply what Louis suggested, similar as annotations? So, what's your take on that, um, Vladimir and Teresa? Um. I can't agree more. Definitely, the first, the first uh, step in, in in mapping is mapping the mappings. So if we have a lot of mappings, a lot of uh, taxonomies, then we have to kind of uh, organize the taxonomies and see what are the the overlapping aspects. Uh, once again, uh, we shouldn't try to include every single possible taxonomy or approach because this will change through time. Let's start with something and probably agree on the bottom ones, which are the topics. And even the tags, if it's necessary, they're the bottom line, and then start from there, and then develop and see with the community how they feel. The ultimate point is that the visitors of the JIPO platform feel comfortable, not that we feel comfortable. So it will much depend on the way the visitors will, will reflect on the digital watch and JIPO and all these observatories. But yes, I think that's the first step. Mm -hmm. Another uh, comment that we have uh, is from European Commission from Christina Monti answering the question uh, on uh, trying uh, to access the uh, trying to access the information that is is, is not freely available. Uh, we have a comment from Christina Monti that uh, European Commission is also trying to build links with uh, other entities like, for example, the EU audiovisual audiovisual media observatory. So that the, um, the the data that it's um, freely not accessible can uh, can be uh, accessible through JI. Um, another comment. Um, Avail uh, Christopher Wilkinson is asking available data. As a current case study, we have one hundreds of uh, hundreds hundreds of pages of the ICAM. Um, ICG negotiations uh, uh, all on, uh, online. Would the JIPO analyze the taxonomy and offer tools for, for classification and understanding? Louise, that's the question for you. Okay, uh, do you hear me? Yes. Yes, okay. So, JIPO, one of the modules that uh, JIPO will have. Uh, will will scan those documents i think similar to to what other initiatives do with this data analysis uh, taking documents uh, maybe express in different formats like uh, maybe microsoft word or maybe pdfs and then make th that deep search scanning the document in the same way that jipo scans uh, the text in in a news item or in a an event and, and trying to, to extract the, the knowledge, so we, we can scan those those documents. Only we we have to know where they are these documents and if they are really viable. And because JIPO will, will not store the information, JIPO only deals with with links and makes a analysis on the fly and then stores the results, the metadata of those, of those results. So give. If those documents are still available, we can uh, schedule. We, we hope to schedule a task that we can fit them into the platform, and then the platform can extract that those information. The other thing is what we do with with those meta tags. If we only we can uh, extract uh, some maybe the headings, the summary of, of the document, and then apply those tags, and, and then a user can can search. Uh, Using those meta tags and, and categories that we explain in this common taxonomy, and, and then we can present them with links to those documents. But we cannot, we do not know the, the user case, the user model. We need to define it to, to make a, some some functionality if, if it is needed by the community and is commonly agreed. Because now the the, the expectations of the tool is only scanning those documents and adding uh, this kind of extra information about the the contents, but not making maybe a deep analysis that can only be made by by a human, by human curation. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, we have another question, we, and we, we have to hurry up a little bit because, because we still want to introduce uh, um, advisor in the group for, for JIPO. So we have a, a question from Amanda Lawrence. Uh, 
for the geographic terms, will you use geon, geo names or fast or something else, Luis? We will, we will try to use uh, geonames or, or this kind of standard uh, taxonomies uh, where they are in, in place. So we are not uh, currently using uh, any one to specific. We hadn't choose uh, a specific one to to adhere to this this geographic classification, but uh, surely we will use one of those standards. I think geonames for us is the first approach, but we we may think about about other one. Another comment that we have from Christina Monti, European Commission, that was uh, the initiator of the of the um, uh, JIPO initiative. The comment uh, that I'm going to share that we hope uh, others could also wish to share data with JIPO in the future. And it's actually the invitation to um, to use JIPO tool in the future to um, to date uh, to get the data from, but also to share data with. So both ways. Uh, and we have another question from uh, Amanda Lawrence to uh, uh, to Vladimir and uh, Teresa from Vito Foundation. Can you provide a link um, to taxonomies and how many terms does Diplo Foundation have? Vladimir or Teresa, can you reply to this question? Uh, I may try to. So as I said, um, the link to the document uh, from 2004 we can send you, um, that I think you can also um, search for it in, in Google, and if I remember the name was, I'll find it, but um, I'll, I'll, we can send it to you. It was the classification of internet governance by Jovan Kurbare. But anyhow, the updated document will be available uh, by the end of this month, uh, so we can share with you. Um, then the, um, uh, the useful document is the CSTD report on IG, which was also uh, supported by the work of, uh, uh, of uh, our classification, so it's something you can also take a look at. We can send it to you. Um, and then, as I said, the Digital Watch, and Teresa mentioned Digital Watch, will also have the uh, classification uh, in itself. Um, how many terms? That was a question, right? Uh, we identified 40 topics currently, topics, that means intellectual property rights, uh, um, taxation, um, I don't know, cybercrime and so on. So 40 topics that you can see on this subway map. But there is uh, about, and I, I think I would lie to you, about 5,000 terms that we have in a terminological model. Uh, there are specific terms of internet governance, but that's something that we are still working on. Um, and that's something that we need. Um, we have a lot of, lot of rigorous academic and research approach to, to kind of fine tune this set of words and, uh, and relations, that's something we're still working on that. So uh, we need more to kind of uh, uh, be sure that, that we can sustain the stress test. So we are trying to uh, attract more support to, to finalize that. Uh, but as I said, those others that I mentioned, we I'll, I'll try to share again, probably to Casia, um, links and, and so on, so that you have access to. Uh, yes, of course, I'm going to share it uh, with uh, the audience uh, later on. We have another question from Luis. Luis, uh, uh, Luis can, you, uh, can you ask the question that you shared with us, maybe di directly, that, that was a question concerning digital watch? Yeah, no, the question was more or less in the, in the same vein that, that Christina Monti said, that is, you know, the question was if digital watch will, will share the, the information, the, the issues, the, the instruments and, and information on, on that, uh, not only from humans but also for, for machines in some <laughs> readable way, maybe by Jabbo, <laughs> maybe by from an RSS or an IPA or a service that we can query the digital watch with our machine and, and get content. That's a question to Vladimir and Teresa. Um, I'm not sure uh, if yes, I understood correctly. Um, uh, Teresa, yeah, go ahead. Go yes, ahead. Uh, this is the question. Uh, this is the question, uh, Vlada, that was that was also asked in the chat. Um, we are uh, we are working uh, working on this. Uh, I would uh, like to avoid answering uh, the technical, purely technical questions in in that much uh, that much detail at this stage. But 
we are really in the finalizing uh, stage. This is definitely one of the idea that we should uh, we should uh, discover because yes, obviously the objective is to have the initiatives interoperable. Okay, so uh, th these are all comments. Uh, and, um, I, this is th these are all comments that I see right now. Ginger Pack from uh, uh, Diplo Foundation shared uh, the link to the document that uh, Vladimir was uh, mentioning. So I shared it via chat uh, with everybody, and uh, Ginger Pack is also mentioning. Uh, that uh, the up an update will be available available before the end of September. And now we have to finish Q and A session so that I can give the voice to Jamal Shahin and uh, Trisha, uh, Trisha Meyer to briefly present the um, uh, JICO advisory group. Actually, today during the webinar, there was uh, a couple of members of the advisory group uh, together with us. I hope that some of them still stayed. Um, so I'm, I'm giving the voice to, to Jamal right now. Hi, welcome. Uh, Jamal and Tricia are here. Um, and we're just going to talk a bit about the advisory group. And we're really happy to see that there were five, I think five members of the advisory group participating in the webinar today, so thank you very much um, because they're from all over the world and some of them should be asleep right now, but they're not. Um, we're going to uh, just very briefly, because we know that um, time is of the essence right now, we're going to very briefly go through a few of the key tasks of the advisory group, talk about what we've done so far um, and the most important thing for today is to launch the um, open the call for open nominations um, for um, filling up the remainder of the spaces in the advisory group. Okay, so uh, Trisha and myself work at the Vrije Universiteit Brussel at the Institute for European Studies, and we are the AG Secretariat or Team AG. <clears throat> uh, Move like this there. The tasks of the AG have been described in one of the blog entries that you can find on the GPO website. But um, essentially, there are four key uh, tasks um, that are written up on your screen right now. I won't go through them all, but um, the advisory group is there to advise, not to um, provide concrete solutions. Um, and we are trying to ensure that the advisory group is a very diverse group of people um, uh, with people uh, from all over the world because GPO is a global uh, internet observatory, policy observatory, but also from different disciplinary backgrounds um, and from different kind of stakeholder groups as well. Um, and so we're hoping that those uh, contributions come from this to make um, what GPO actually does uh, a more representative or at least understanding of what's going on in the field. Um, there have so far been three AG meetings and in the first three meetings a lot of the things we focused on have been explaining what GPO is about, um, looking at trying to explain uh, to the AG um, from our own perspective what GPO or JPO is going to do. Um, We've been using the time in the first few meetings to develop a working procedure. Our mode of operations is published now online. Um, and because of who the AG members are, we've been discussing interactions with other initiatives, which is a recurrent topic that we've heard quite a bit about today and will continue to hear about in the different webinars organized by uh, Open Evidence. Um, to Things that have been uh, quite recurrent also have been the discussion related to taxonomy and the AG has been having a long discussion which will, uh, you've seen uh, there's been discussion also questions from the AG in this presentation. Um, uh, so that's one of the areas and the other area where we're hoping that the AG will become um, more active is in expanding the source list right now. GPO, the tool, runs on the closed source list and we're hoping that GPO will be able to expand that list. Now, there are eight members of the advisory group so far and we are launching um, in the coming days an open nomination process, a call for open nominations for um, four new members. Um, that will bring the total to 12 and these 12 people will have one-year mandates which may be renewed or not. Um, 
and we are seeking um, people who have expertise in the areas that are mentioned on the screen. So legal issues, multilingualism, and stakeholder uh, engagement. We're particularly interested in <clears throat> finding representation or developing our representation in the geographic areas that are mentioned on the screen because we're, we are very keen to make sure that um, as many areas of the world are represented on the advisory group as possible. Um, that's basically um, the, the call will go out. It will be, um, we will be asking people to nominate somebody else um, for the call um, and so it will be a third party nomination process um, and more information will be published in a blog entry that will be launched in the coming days. You have to publish that uh, on the GPO website and as registered members you'll all receive some information about that. I believe. Okay, so um, there will be very soon some more information about the AG on the GPO website. Um, we do intend to publish um, all um, action points and agendas uh, for the meetings that we have, which take place once every two months, more or less. And we do have an email address um, where Trisha and I can be contacted and we can um, so then contact the rest of the advisory group um, for you. Um, that's it from our side. Thank you very much. And um, we are really now looking at uh, time management. Thanks, Kasia. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Jamal. Uh, that was uh, a very long webinar, but also a very productive one. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for attendance. Uh, may I also say that this webinar was part of uh, uh, of a series of webinars that we um, uh, that we organized for JIPO. Uh, I hope now you can see uh, the upcoming events. Uh, we, the next webinar is going to be in October, uh, but I would, uh, I would really like you to invite you to uh, especially other mapping initiatives and observatories to live workshop that's going to take place uh, in, during IGF. Uh, um, um, JIPO will have uh, an hour um, open debate during uh, the upcoming GF that's going to take place on the 13th of uh, November this year. And of course, there's uh, there's going to uh, there's going to be the possibility of uh, live participation. So uh, please keep track uh, of the information available on JIPO.net.org site uh, for uh, for any details so thank you very much uh, one more time and uh, and see you and hear you uh, soon <laughs>